Hello viewers, today I have an aeronautical engineer in the studio and you are going to analyze what might have caused the Ethiopian airline Boeing 737 MAX 8 to crash. His name is engineer Richard Elud Aswani. Welcome to Spread TV. Thank you. So how long have you been in the aeronautical engineering industry? Well, I've been in the industry for quite a number of years now. Mm -hmm. I, uh, us in aviation, we say we've started being in the industry when we have started studying aeronautical engineering. Okay. So I started studying aeronautical engineering back in 2013. Mm -hmm. Till now, I'm partaking uh, in the same table of aviators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we recently lost uh, our fellow Kenyans in the uh, in the Ethiopian airline crash. And what what can you say about it? What do you think uh, it might have caused the problem? Actually, it's so sad that we lost uh, most Kenyans in that flight and give our condolences to the families. Actually, we lost two members of KAA. Mm -hmm. They were in that flight mm -hmm. and as an aviation fraternity in Kenya, we are mourning for those two guys. Mm -hmm. So it's a sad thing. It's a sad thing that happened. There have been rumors that the captain of the plane was a very young person. Do you think that might have been one of the reasons why the plane crashed? No, no, no. We can't say that's the reason. Uh, being a civilian airline pilot, you have to qualify. Mm -hmm. And the first qualification you have, you have to have hours in flight. Uh -huh. So for him to have sat in that seat at that particular moment, it means that he was competent enough. He had the enough hours and uh, certification to be in that seat. Mm -hmm. So we can't say young age could be the problem. Oh. Yeah, we can't say young age could be the problem. Okay, since you are an aeronautical engineer, uh, what do you think might have been the cause of the crash? Well, for an aircraft to crash, uh, there are a lot of things involved. Mm -hmm. But for this particular case, uh, we find that the aircraft just came down. Mm -hmm. uh, it pitched down. In, a, in an aviation language, we say pitched down. Mm -hmm. So it pitched down, and it wasn't able to recover to that level flight that it was supposed to take. Mm -hmm. And it came all down till it hit the ground. Uh -huh. Remember that uh, the aircraft had just taken off. Uh -huh. So it was during its climb, its climb. when it came down. Uh, uh, it said that it took at around six minutes. Around six minutes after takeoff. Uh -huh. Yeah. So as the aircraft was climbing, mm -hmm. Uh, all of a sudden it went down. Uh -huh. So the reason, uh, the question is why did it go down? Well for a plane to go down uh, in that case uh, during climb, first uh, there's a thing we call stalling, aircraft stalling and this is where the wing of the aircraft cannot generate enough lift to carry the load of the aircraft. Uh -huh. Therefore the aircraft drops from the sky. Okay. This particular aircraft uh, was climbing Mm -hmm. And we have this system in that aircraft that's supposed to control the level at which the aircraft can pitch up. Uh -huh. This level must be controlled and should be controlled because if we pitch up mm -hmm. to a certain angle, we pass the critical angle, uh -huh. you find that the angle of attack of the aircraft will be so high uh -huh. that the wings will not be able to generate lift to carry this aircraft. As this aircraft was climbing, uh -huh. uh, the sensors of the MCAS system the maneuvering characteristics argumentation system mm -hmm. gave the data to the flight computer that the angle of attack is too high uh -huh. and it gave a command to the elevators of the aircraft that pitch down the nose of that aircraft mm -hmm. so as the aircraft was pitching down to a level height so that it doesn't stall mm -hmm. the computer did not report that data to that computer uh -huh. so the sensors uh, kept giving false data to the computer. Mm -hmm. So as the false data was entering to the computer, the command from the computer was still pitched down mm -hmm. the aircraft. Mm -hmm. And the aircraft pitched down and the pilots were not able to recover that aircraft. And mm -hmm. that's why it hit the ground. Oh, so we can't say there was uh, maybe mechanical issues or any failure in the one of the machines in the, air, in the airplane. Or what do you think? Uh, in aviation, actually, we say there are no accidents. Mm -hmm. In aviation, there are no accidents. It's mm -hmm. just a series of mistakes that mm -hmm. lead to a catastrophe. Because okay. most accidents in aviation, uh, in civil aviation, claim a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. It claims a lot of bright minds. Okay. So, uh, in aviation, there are no accidents. It's just a series of mistakes that leads to a crash or a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. For our case, we have this MCAS system. Uh. Uh, that was giving false information uh -huh. to the flight computer. Okay. So this MCAS system was designed by man. Uh -huh. And you find that reports say, the FAA say that 
the system was not re redundant. Mm -hmm. The sensors were not re redundant. Mm -hmm. And redundant in this case, we say, uh, you have a series of sensors. So that when one sensor gives a false information, mm -hmm. the other sensors contradict that information, and the pilot has a chance to know that maybe the system is failing. Mm -hmm. But you find in this case, the information that came from the sensors went direct to the computer unchallenged. Okay. So we can't say that it was a engineering malfunction or something. We can say, yes, it could be uh, an error to the engineers, but for this case, the engineers on the ground were not directly connected to that error. Okay. Yeah, it was software error. Okay, so according to you, uh, what measures do you think uh, could have been taken so that to prevent uh, the crash? During a crash, uh -huh. there's a lot of uh, things that run through someone's mind. Mm -hmm. First is panic. And when your mind has panicked, it's so hard for it to think straight. Uh -huh. And that's why they advise pilots to be sober-minded guys uh -huh. and who are very calm uh -huh. even when they are under a lot of pressure. Uh -huh. So you find that this pilot uh, was supposed to switch off that system uh -huh. and take the control of the aircraft manually. Uh -huh. That was what the pilot was supposed to do because uh -huh. the engines had not failed. Okay. The control surfaces had not failed. Uh -huh. So the uh, the, the pilot could have controlled the aircraft directly if he had switched that MCAS system off. Mm -hmm. He could have taken the control of the aircraft and recovered it. Actually, there was a flight in Jakarat that the pilot, the crew, noticed that this system is malfunctioning and they switched that system off. Mm -hmm. And they were able to recover the aircraft mm -hmm. and they landed safely. Okay. Yeah. So can we say the pilot did not control the the plane manual when they came to realize that there was some malfunction? Well, he can't control the aircraft manually if he hasn't switched off the automatic system. Uh -huh. And the automatic system for our case is this MCAS. Okay. This MCAS, if it was switched off, the controls of that elevator would have come back to the pilot. Uh -huh. So that command of pitching down uh -huh. would have been cancelled by the pilot. So after the crash, uh, the Boeing 737 MAX 8 uh, their plane has, has been grounded. Well, what, what do you think? Is it right, was it the right thing to do, or what do you think? So, uh, so when we ground the aircraft, mm -hmm. it's because it's uh, it has proved to be a hazard mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. And you see things like civilian aircraft. Mm -hmm. uh, you find it when it crashes. Mm -hmm. Chances that uh, most of the people in the flight will die. Uh -huh. And if it falls in a residential area, also it will cause some problem on the, yeah, on the, on the ground. Yeah. When the 737 MAX 8 was grounded, let's say all over the world, mm -hmm. it's because they have seen some similarity mm -hmm. in the Ethiopian airline accident and the Lion Air accident, which took place uh, late last year, mm -hmm. I think in October. Yeah. So you find that the Lion Air mm -hmm. and uh, the Ethiopian airline mm -hmm. both fell down after shortly after takeoff because oh. for Ethiopian airline we find that it had three uh, six oh, minutes, minutes on, and yeah. for the lion air we find that it had 13 minutes oh, okay. so you find that when they did the an, an, an analysis uh -huh. for this they found that that crash was similar uh -huh. and for them to avoid any other aircraft to succumb to the same uh -huh. they decided to ground all the aircraft until they resolve what what could be the issue uh -huh. that uh, is causing this aircraft uh, to fall. The Boeing CEO uh, lately said that they are going to do a software update of the MCAS system. Uh -huh. So we believe as aviators mm -hmm. that update is going to save lives. Uh -huh. At least in this update we are expecting that the sensors are going to be redundant where we'll have several sensors in mm -hmm. case of uh, a single pair or uh, a single unit of sensors. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that case we are also hoping that they are going to take our pilots uh -huh. who are flying the MAXs mm -hmm. uh, for training so that they are able to understand these new systems well mm -hmm. yeah so why do you think airlines prefer buying the 73 boeing 737 maxes uh, you find that the boeing 737 maxes uh max 8 to be particular it's a new aircraft it came out back in 2017, 2017. so uh, we can say it's a few years old yeah. but you find that 
uh, when the aircraft came, mm -hmm. it superseded the Airbus A380. Uh -huh. You see, these are two competitors. We have the Airbus and we have the Boeing. the Boeing. So the Boeing were competing the Airbus, uh -huh. and they brought a better aircraft actually to the to the to the industry because uh -huh. this aircraft had a better a better seat number, uh -huh. better fuel economy, uh -huh. better range uh -huh. compared to the ones that have been before. Uh -huh. So you find that most airlines prefer this aircraft because. Uh, it's going to save them some cash on fuel, mm -hmm. it's going to add them some cash on the number of passengers, mm -hmm. and again the range, it's going to cover a longer distance uh, with a certain amount of fuel. Mm -hmm. So that's why most airlines went for the uh, 737 Maxis. So you are an aeronautical engineer and we have a lot of people, or we can say students, who would like to be like you. What advice could you give them? The advice I'd give guys out there who are aspiring to be aeronautical engineers is that engineering is in your blood. You've seen it. Your dad brings you a toy, you dismantle it. Uh, your dad finds you opening the radio. That's engineering in you. So the thing is to channel that engineering to something constructive. And this uh, will come if you put more focus in your academics and more focus in sciences, understanding and trying to think how things work. Once you know how things work, you have that engineering drive in you. When you pursue this course, maintain focus in class, uh, be vigilant and uh, be, be current. Try and see what is happening in the world, what's happening in Europe, what's happening in Asia, what's happening in the, in the USA that can happen back here at home. You find that aeronautical engineering is a very wide field. You can do a lot of things in aeronautical engineering. If you want to be an aeronautical engineer, you have to give it your best. Well, you've heard it from the engineer himself. If you really want to become an aeronautical engineer, you have to give it your best. Thank you for coming to Spread TV. Thank you. Well, I'm your host, Douglas Aswani, and this is Spread TV, and it's the best in the industry. Till we meet again. Hello, viewers. My name is Douglas Aswani. I'm the host of Spread TV, the best in the industry. Behind the camera, we have Elvis Derry, who's the producer. Feel free to subscribe, feel free to follow, and feel free to comment. Keep it locked.